So we do a lot of sprout reports on Coco. Now this is the girl that has lots of sprouts. Every year, or not every year, every time there's like a time change or um, the temperature changes or the lighting, mostly the light, like if the days get longer or shorter, she molts. And I can tell she's gonna start to molt because she won't let me pet her. Her head gets really sensitive. And this captive parrots usually need help preening their head. Because in the wild, they have mates and friends that would do it for them. But when um, they don't, they need help from their humans. But she has big ones, like really big ones. Hers is really sensitive. Like I have to be really careful with her. She'll let me know when it hurts. Oh, got a tickle? You can see she's a bunny. This is the one that she gets pretty much whatever she wants. This one, I feel she's the one I feel sorry for the most because she's, I think she would be the one that would be uh, that needs a boyfriend more than any of my birds, right? You'd love a boyfriend. I know you would. Also the macaws. I always feel bad because they shouldn't be in cages. They should be able to. They're so beautiful and their wings are so broad and their wings are meant to fly, not to. Like they're, they, they can soar like amazingly. Remember one time when we first got her, when we first got her, she she went everywhere with us. We clipped her wings so she can go around town, so she could go out for walks with us. Um, my husband would take her around. He used to be the building manager as one of his jobs, and he'd take her everywhere. And one day, she loved him. She wouldn't leave him. One day, Kiwi, Kiwi was on his shoulder and he opened the front door of the building and she got spooked by a large noise. It was New Year's Eve. She was clipped and she flew away. Now we're in downtown Vancouver, so we're not in a we're not in a country area, so it wouldn't be hard to spot her. You wanna get up here? You wanna get up here? Go up there. There, come on. Go on your perch. And then I'll keep petting you. Anyways, so she flew away. My husband came running up to me and said, oh my God, Kiwi's gone. And I'm like, what? I was hysterical. She just disappeared. It was New Year's Eve, downtown Vancouver, around four o'clock, freezing cold, and our bird is missing. Thankfully, we, we were close with a lot of people in our building, so they helped us look for her. We were combing the streets. Um, my daughter made posters within 15 minutes, and we were all posting the posters everywhere. I ended up going to every building. I went on top of hotels and asked if I could go on the roof to look for my bird, went to the fire station, I asked everybody. 
you could imagine New Year's Eve, me running around the city, sobbing, hysterical, looking for a macaw. It was awful. So anyway, so I just cried and cried and cried. I thought, how am I gonna live not knowing where she is? And then, uh, I was roaming the streets and my daughter was manning the phones because we already had the posters up. And then, I think it was around six, six that night, uh, we get a call, my daughter gets a call and says, they, I think I found your bird. Because she was walking in a back alley and a big macaw walked out and stepped right up on her hand. And right there was a poster. So she called us and I ran as fast as I could to get to her. Grabbed her and brought her home. And you know what? We never ever clipped her wings again. And she's been at, the only time she goes outside now is in a carrier or in a cage. I will never, ever want to live like that again. And never, ever want one of my birds to fly away. Because it was the worst feeling in the world. I thought I was going to die. We took her to the doctor and she just had a couple, so, a couple of cheek, cheek scratches. But she was fine. She sort of survived New Year's Eve out in Vancouver, didn't you? Anyway, that's the story of Kiwi, how she got away, and how I learned my lesson, right? Just because your birds flip doesn't mean they can't fly away.